Considering that I failed the first midterm without scaling and barely got above average on the second midterm, the scaling on the final exam must have went crazy for me to get an above average grade. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the 11 courses that I took this year, one of these courses was ELEC 221. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking ELEC 221 during the 2023-2024 school year with Professor Joseph Yan. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. Alright, so what is ELEC 221 all about? In this course, you will learn all about signals and systems, covering how to classify different signals and systems, such as continuous time and discrete time signals and systems, how to perform frequency analysis using Fourier series and Fourier transforms, how signal sampling works, and state-space representation. This course heavily relies on Math 256 or an equivalent differential equations course, so I would recommend brushing up on that material before you head into ELEC 221. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how ELEC 221 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week you will have three hours of lectures to attend, where the professor will explain the main course concepts through a mixture of theory, discussion, and some examples. In our year, the skeleton slides and the full lecture slides were both posted before each lecture, and attending the lectures was not mandatory. Depending on who your professor is, pre-recorded videos or live recordings of the lectures may be available for you to access, which was the case in my year. You will also have a two-hour tutorial session each week, which can either be used for another lecture, a tutorial session, or a midterm exam. Speaking of the tutorial sessions, there will occasionally be some in-class participation activities that will either be hosted during a lecture or a tutorial session. Our year was the first year that the ELEC 221 instructional team introduced these in-class activities, so it was safe to say that we were definitely guinea pigs for what worked and what didn't work. It's also safe to say that a lot of things didn't work as intended. Anyways, these activities for us were either a Python lab, where we would work through a little Python crash course on Anaconda that applied some of the concepts that we learned in class, or an actual tutorial session held by the TAs, where they would put up a Canvas quiz and a WebWork quiz with some questions related to a specific concept, and then they would go through them with us during the tutorial session. If all of this seems very disorganized, that's probably because it was, and I really, really hope that they iron this out for future years or just scrap it all together. In terms of homework, you will have weekly webwork assignments that generally consist of six to seven questions that are designed to help you practice the concepts that are taught during the lectures. For me, these assignments generally took between three to eight hours to complete each week, depending on how difficult the questions were. One very important thing to note about these webwork assignments is that during our year, we were limited to 10 attempts for each of the questions on the webwork assignments, which definitely made them a lot more stress inducing when I was doing them. In terms of the required materials for this course, you don't need to purchase any textbooks or software for ELEC 221, and you only really need something to take notes with and a computer to do your webwork assignments and tutorial activities on. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in ELEC 221. At the start of the course, you'll get an introduction to what signals and systems are and do a quick review of complex numbers, reviewing how they can be represented using polar coordinates, exponents, or trigonometry. You'll then move on to learning about continuous time signals or CT signals, and you'll learn about some basic signals, signal classification, and how to calculate the energy and power of a specific signal. After CT signals are CT systems, which take an input signal and spit out an output signal. You'll learn about how they can be classified based on linearity, causality, time invariance, memory, and stability, and how CT systems can be represented with linear ordinary differential equations. Next, you'll do a quick review of Laplace transforms and transfer functions from Math 255 or Math 256 before doing a quick review of Fourier series, covering the different representations of a Fourier series, how to find the frequency response of a system, and how to find the Fourier series of different signals. This will bring you to around the first midterm exam. After the first midterm, you'll move on to learning about Fourier transforms, which is a way to transform a signal in the time domain into a signal in the frequency domain, and vice versa. 
Next, you'll learn about signal sampling and the Nyquist sampling theorem, which are both related to generating a discrete time signal from a continuous time signal in an analog to digital converter. Speaking of, after sampling, you will cover discrete time, or DT, signals and systems, which share a lot of properties with CT signals and systems, so it shouldn't be too difficult to grasp this concept. This will bring you to around the second midterm exam. And in the last stretch of the course, you'll start with covering Z transforms, which is basically the discrete time equivalent of doing a Laplace transform to a CT signal or system. You'll then cover Fourier analysis for discrete time signals and systems before the last topic of the course, which is state space representation. You'll learn how to find the matrices that describe the state space of a system at any given time or time step, how to apply that to find the state space representation of some circuits, and how to determine if a system is controllable or observable. This unit heavily relies on the use of determinants, matrix multiplication, and inversion from Math 152, so make sure you brush up on that knowledge before heading into this unit. And that's pretty much everything that you're going to learn in ELEC 221. In terms of the grading scheme for ELEC 221, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Starting with your in-class tutorial activities, these are weighted at 10% of your overall grade, and your 10 web work assignments are weighted at 15%. If you do not participate in any of the in-class tutorial activities, this weighting will automatically be shifted to your final exam. Speaking of the exams, you will have two midterm exams worth 15 and 20% respectively, and a final exam worth 40%. No calculators are allowed for these exams, and you're allowed to bring your own formula sheets to the second midterm and the final exam. These formula sheets do not have any restrictions on what can be put on them, or whether they are printed or handwritten, so it's really up to you. For our second midterm, we were allowed five single-sided pages, and for the final exam, we were allowed five double-sided pages, or ten single-sided pages, for our formula sheet. For context, this is what my final exam formula sheet looked like, and it was pretty much a matter of just cramming all of my notes and as many solutions to past exam questions as possible onto my formula sheet. Speaking of the questions that will be on the exams, they will generally be a mix of short answer questions that should only take a few minutes to complete, and longer answer questions that have multiple parts and require a lot more work. Because you're not allowed to use calculators on the exams, you will need to simplify your answers to a reasonable extent. Generally speaking, the numbers that you'll be working with won't be too outrageous or tedious to perform calculations with, so if you're getting really weird numbers that are making your life really hard, chances are that you did something wrong in one of the previous steps. One last note about our exams, during our year at least one person in the class was guaranteed to get 100% for every exam, whether it be organically, which never happened thank goodness, or through copious amounts of scaling. Depending on how your class does, the scaling that will be applied to your exam grades may consist of the scaling percentage that it takes to get the top student up to 100%, and possibly some additional scaling after that. Case in point, there will probably be a lot of scaling done in ELEC 221. Alright, now onto some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into ELEC 221. Generally speaking from my experience in ELEC 221, the content itself is actually not that difficult to learn, but it can just be very tedious and time consuming sometimes to actually sit down and do the work for this course. Especially if you're in second year electrical engineering and you're taking this course at the same time as ELEC 291 and a few other difficult courses, ELEC 221 can definitely fall on the back burner if you don't pay enough attention to it. What will probably end up happening is that before each of the exams, you'll most likely cram all of the concepts up until that point in the span of less than 48 hours and then forget all of it again until the next exam. And to be completely honest, this happened to me and I ended up cramming almost half the course concepts right before the final exam. Speaking of the exams, I can also say that the web work questions that you have as homework bear little to no resemblance at all to the questions that will show up on your midterm and the final exam. ELEC 221, as theoretical as it may seem from the lecture slides and the notes, is actually a very mechanical course, meaning you basically memorize how to do a certain question and then you just do it pretty much. Doing the past exams before a midterm or the final will be very beneficial for you to help build a decent knowledge bank of question types to construct your answers from. And yes, there will most likely be questions that you've never seen before that are meant for the high achieving kids in the class to understand. But you're not watching this video because you want to do exceptionally well in this course. If you are, well, let's just say you're in the wrong place. 
And for those of you who are curious, I scored a 71% in ELEC 221 and the class average was 68%. Considering that I failed the first midterm without scaling and barely got above average on the second midterm, the scaling on the final exam must have went crazy for me to get an above average grade. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before heading into ELEC 221. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in second year. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that the next course that I'll be covering will be ELEC 281. And I'm just gonna say that I am not looking forward to making that video. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.